Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome dear learners to the another session of International Business Management. I am Dr. Manisha Goswami, Assistant Professor at Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Matra. Today we are going to begin with lecture number 6, it is about the nation and national business approaches. Even we will talk about, before we begin with the lecture number 6, let us quickly review what we did in our past 2 lectures. In the past 2 lectures, we tried to analyze the pestle environment and newly added another E that is of ethical environment have also been discussed in the previous lecture. Let us quickly recap what we did, what we studied in the past lecture. First, in the, uh, the previous lecture, we talked about the political environment where we figure out the political systems of the different nation. We also try to figure out various political risks which particular MNC might have to face and what different strategy a particular international business has to frame keeping in mind those certain political risks. Second, we talked about legal environment and we try to figure out the various custom duties prevailing in different nations, what are their charges and how a particular investor can get the benefit by investing in special economic zone area, free trade zone area or export processing zone area. Even in the legal environment, we talk about the non-tariff barriers also. Economic environment was also studied in depth where economic factors and non-economic factors have been taken into consideration while deciding which particular country will be the most preferred country for entering into international market. Socio-cultural environment was studied in depth where we try to figure out that how cross-cultural management issues can affect your strategies. So, for understanding the cross-cultural issues, we have to go a little more in depth about the various characteristics of the culture, the elements of the culture, the dimensions of the culture have also been taken into account while analyzing the socio-cultural environment. Apart from this, we have also understood the cultural implication on international business, issues of cross-cultural management, how to manage the diversity, social environment and the religious point of view and the view of the people from the perspective of religion they belong to have also been taken into consideration in the previous lecture. Next that we talked about the technological environment, how technology is influencing the dimensions, various different fields. Technology is not only affecting the technological environment, technology is like a pervasive thing which is affecting even the political, economical, socio-cultural and even the ecological environment of the nation and the world. So, it is very important to know how this particular technological development advancement take, which is taking place at the world level is going to affect the economy of developing nation and the underdeveloped nation. Next, we had discussed ecological environment and the ethical environment. In ecological environment, we try to figure out that how different climatical changes, weather, natural calamity, greenhouse emission and environment protection policies are going to be a matter of concern when you are putting up your investment in a foreign market. Which particular product will be more suitable for a particular kind of coldest weather in the world? If you are the, going to deal with a place of country like India having all different three seasons, so which particular product will be acceptable over here? Ethical environment have also been taken into consideration because without, without following the ethics in business, you will find suffocating to continue with the business with that nation. Because ethical grounds are ultimately going to shape the way you are dealing with the customer, the way you are dealing with the government of that nation, the way you are dealing with your worker. Ethics are actually the understanding of what is right and what is wrong. 
and in this particular line of understanding of what is right and what is wrong you have to have build, you have to do certain things what for the society because you are making use of the resources of the society so if you will be giving back to the society through your csr it's going to enhance your reputation and your business ethics is going to be refined so these different things we had discussed in the previous lecture i hope you people have understood them now we are going to begin with the lecture number 6 and before actually starting with lecture number 6 let's get into learning objectives learning objective 1 is going to analyze the international business approaches second the concept of stage of internationalization third recognize the nature of mnc fourth recognize the relationship between headquarter subsidiary transfer of technology and its type will also be discussed in depth recognize the mnc in india we are going to cover the different aspects and it will be thrilling for you to know that a single company can have multiple approach when they are entering into the foreign market let's begin with the international business approach these are the different orientation a particular company can have when they are deciding to move to a international market this particular model of eprg was developed by paul mutter in the year 1975 before that this model was known as epg model later on r regiocentrism was added and it become a complete eprg model in the year 1975 now what this eprg is what does ethnocentrism means what does polycentrism mean regiocentrism mean geocentrism mean let's get into it and let me make you certain things more clear by giving a little glimpse and idea about ethnocentrism those company who carry their own ethical values their ethnicity and carry forward with their ethnicity even in the host country these kind of country these kind of a companies are going to be termed as ethnocentric companies company who believe their culture is supreme and they try to pass on the culture to the different nation across the globe are going to be termed as an ethnocentric companies they don't bring any alteration or they don't bring any changes in the product which they are offering to the host country rather they would be exactly offering the same product to the various host country say for example i am having a headquarter here in india and i am producing certain products in india may, say maybe the khadi products and khadi products i will be exporting to various different nation across the globe maybe america i may be sending to i may be sending to bulgaria right i may be sending to australia right i am not making any changes in these product khadi product is intact what i am producing here in a country is exactly the same and in the same form i am exporting to various different nation irrespective of the culture irrespective of the tra- taste and preferences of the foreign country i am not making any changes i am irrespective to it i am for exporting the product based on the demand which i am receiving from the international market that means i am spreading the product which i am producing in a country to the different nations across the globe i am marketing my product i am finding the clients in the foreign market and marketing them marketing them in the foreign nation polycentric is different in polycentric you are going to alter and customize your product you are from india and suppose you move from india to a country like korea you move to korea south korea then you have to think about the korean culture you cannot think about what is happening in india what kind of the government policy was there you have to stop this disconnect you have to stop this link between india and the korea you have to start your journey from south korea itself you might be having a business in india you can continue with your business in india but at the same time if you are polycentric you are going to start your business from zero from the scratch there in south korea that means you are going to alter customize your product as per the taste and preferences of the south korean people 
you are not going to impose your culture your taste your preferences under the polycentric approach but in here in case of polycentric ethnocentric approach you are imposing your culture your taste and preferences upon the host country where in case of polycentric approach you are not doing so you are adjusting yourself as per the taste and preferences of the host country next is the regiocentric approach a best example of regiocentric approach is a company unilever what unilever did unilever opened what they opened they opened their plant here in india right unilever hul opened their plant here in india and as a result what happened in india they are having a wholly owned subsidiary they are making production here and from this production which is taking place in india they are exporting it to bangladesh and they are exporting it to nepal and they are exporting it to bhutan that means regiocentrism you try to find the best location for having your manufacturing setup and you try to assess the nearby market of that nation and try to produce the product which is more or less close to the needs and preferences of the people nearby nation right say for example you here as you have seen in the case of unilever they opened their hul subsidiary here in india they start making production of certain fmcg products and what they are doing they are not only satisfying the requirement or demand of india whatever the surplus is there or whatever the extra they are producing they are exporting to bangladesh nepal and bhutan that means they are covering the nearby region that is why it is known as regiocentric approach that you try to capture a particular region as you can recall the lecture where we discuss the world economy there in the world economy we were talking about certain continents the entire asia continent the australia right we talked about the european continent african north america and south america continent different continents were discussed right so if you are capturing one particular region maybe a entire asia you are trying to capture or southeast asia you are trying to capture or the only south asia you want to capture so that's your approach is because you are trying to find a particular product which can more or less satisfy the taste buds of these region of the people maybe the southeast asian region people are behaving similar in this matter so i can offer the same product and let me find the country where i can have a least cost of production this is what unilever did they has established their manufacturing unit here uh, as a subsidiary and they are exporting to different other places from india then the next is geocentric approach geocentric approach is some related to global market here you are not confining yourself to one particular country or to one particular region here your focus is on entire globe entire globe is a single market when you are having a geocentric approach companies like software companies like chemical companies who are into pharmaceutical are usually following the geocentric approach they try to invest heavily in r&d to figure out a product which is going to be universally acceptable so geocentric approach is usually adopted by global companies and they are the companies who are into i finding out the product which is going to be universally acceptable a cultural universal product they try to figure out through their r&d now let's get into the difference and the let's see and look at the chart of ethnocentrism regiocentrism and geocentrism and look at this chart and try to find out out the different point of difference between the four different uh, between the four different kind of the international business orientation let's look at the definition part first ethnocentric is based on preference of employee from companies and it is that is a home country that means it is based on the preference of employees from the companies of the home country they are solely relying on the home country taste and preferences where in case of the polycentric they are relying on what 
host country national that means the tastes and preferences of the country where they will be having a business so they will be relying solely on the host country national taste and preferences accordingly they will be adjusting their product where in case of regiocentrism it is based on preference of every market believe in uniqueness of every market and they also try to figure out that if a particular market is behaving in a particular manner like Asia market is behaving in one similar manner then I am going to cover this region and if I am observing that Africa market along with some of the portion of the Asia market is behaving in same similar manner then I am going to cover the two. So this is what regiocentrism is they believe in respecting the uniqueness of every market and for them a market is a particular region every region is different for them that is so true and they are respecting that but in case of geocentrism they find there are certain commonalities among all the citizens in the world among all the people living in different different religion uh, different different re region or the continent they are having certain commonalities so they rely on identifying uh, those commonalities through R&D and they come up with the product which is going to be universally acceptable across the globe now let's look at the strategic orientation of the ethnocentric companies they are home countries right they are totally based on the home country taste and preferences what the culture they have they consider their culture their taste as supreme and try to pass on their culture and taste to the foreign countries polycentric are host country nationals they are focusing more on what the taste and bud of the host country they find that my culture is supreme equally the other country culture is supreme and if I want to have a long run game in the market then I should respect the host country culture and I should moderate my product or I rather I should find better product to serve this host country customer. Regiocentric approach is regional orientation is there and in case of the geocentrism there is a global orientation. As far as the product is concerned of the ethnocentric market, they are usually into industrial products where in case of the polycentrism, consumer goods are there. In case of regiocentrism, some FMCG products are there, daily use products might be there and geocentrism, the products are going to be of cultural universal acceptance like television, heavy electronic gadgets like mobile phone, television yet uh, even the medicines are going to be the part of geocentrism software computer laptop these are the example of geocentrism because it is not there is no difference uh, when uh, the difference in the taste and preference of the customer when you are crossing the boundary it is going to be exactly acceptable in the same form they are manufacturing in a headquarter or any of the manufacturing setup Geography or uh, where the ethnocentric companies are usually they are in the developing countries and they are generally targeting the developing countries from the developed nations they are targeting developing countries right where in case of geocentrism usually the target is US and European market because the technology is very strong over there R&D is comparatively very strong so they usually target the US and Europe kind of the countries. Uh, even there are difference in staffing style of these different orientation of international business when it comes to ethnocentric they usually follow expatriate style of staffing that means as they consider themselves supreme their culture is best so what they would be doing they would be sending their employees to the host country to establish their branch that's a expatriate style of staffing where you are sending your own home country employees skilled expert employees to the host country to establish your branch over there second style of staffing is going to be in the polycentric where you are going to trust the host country nationals you trust the skills of the host country workers and you give a full autonomy to them to take their own decision to take their own call as per the taste and preference of that country in regiocentrism we found a little mixed kind of the approach where you are going to be expatriate for some days and then it is going to be the host country national right and in the case of geocentrism it is going to be the third country national 
that means that you might be a company you might be having a company in europe or maybe in the italy and having an employees across the globe your company headquarters is in italy and you are having employees from india sri lanka thailand philippine bangkok uh, you are having the employees from australia you are having the employees from japan korea even as having employees from south america like brazil right paraguay uruguay and even from the uh, the the north america side canada right you are having employees from all different parts of the world because you are just looking for one particular skill and for on the basis of that skill you are making certain recruitment selection boundaries geographical boundaries are not the bar for you that kind of the uh, staffing style is prevailing in geocentrism now let's look at the cost and benefit attached to the different approach of international business ethnocentric approach is having certain cost and benefit attached to it now how going how is going to be costlier for the organization when they are having ethnocentric approach how how it is going to be an, uh, a little a, a gray area how it can be negative thing for the organization when they are having ethnocentric approach in the international market so there are certain list of the cost which company have to bear when they decide to be ethnocentric ineffective planning due to poor feedback as you are believing in having a staffing style of expatriate that means you are appointing your own people to go to the host country and establish the unit over there that means you will not be getting the idea about the local population you will not be getting the idea about the local environment and the cultural system of the local area that means you will be poorly feeded you don't have any idea about that local market where you are having a business second a uh, cost that ethnocentric company usually wear is subsidiary valuable executive fly that means a employee whom you are asking to go to the host country might find some other better opportunity and leave your organization that can be another cost for you fewer innovation as you are just thinking that you are supreme the things or the way you get the work done is the best no other option and alternatives are there so with this mind mindset will you be able to allow your worker to think and come up with new ideas for sure the answer is no then if the answer is no that means there will be no innovation in ability to build high caliber local organization again because your orientation is totally focusing on your home country culture your orientation is totally on focusing on your home country style of production then how you will be able to develop a business unit in that local organization with better caliber you won't be able to develop it lack of flexibility and responsiveness you are not flexible because you are too rigid about your own system about your own style of work as you are too rigid you are not going to accept any suggestions and as you are not accepting suggestion there is no innovation again and because you are inflexible you 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 are you are less flexible then what is going to happen there will be the possibility of what there will be the possibility of lack of responsiveness towards the particular area that means you will not be giving uh, your attention towards the local requirements the local taste their local well, maybe the local population they might be a little concerned about the price that you are offering but you are least concerned about that because you are not focusing on the response you are not focusing on the taste and preferences or the demographics of the local market so these are certain cost which ethnocentric companies usually bear and there are two benefits also one is that simple organization the structure is quite simple there is no complication in the structure of the ethnocentrism like there is a managing director within the managing director there are the various managers right managers of like the manager hr right of different domain is there finance manager of your r&d is there manager of marketing is there and within the manager of marketing there are certain assistant marketing managers right 
and there is going to be the manufacturing unit, there is going to be the sales unit, right. So, this is going to be the structure of ethnocentric kind of the organization wherever they will be having rather they will be having the export unit right complete export unit for managing the exports right they may, they may be doing the production in their own country and exporting the same product across the different places. So, this is a very simple structure and the greater communication and control as you are not appointing any people from different culture, different religion, different language. So, what is going to happen? There will be a better control on communication and as well as the control on activities of the business because you are only sending your own people to the host country. You are following expatriate style of staffing. That means you are sending your own people to the host country if in case you open your own multinational there. Then in that case also you are if you are following the ethnocentric approach in that case you are having expatriate style of staffing and the person is yours your country and the person speak the same language which you speak, the person is in your organization for so many years, has understood the vision mission of your organization, has working in alignment with your objectives and your target, then there is going to be for sure a complete control and greater communication. Now, let us look at the approaches of uh, polycentric and uh, the cost different cost and benefit attached to the polycentric environment. Here there is going to be a waste because of duplication. Though polycentric approach is like Jaisa Desh Vesa Bhesh. Agar hum India mein aaye hai, so India ke hisab se humara production hoga. So if it is so, then there is going to be a lot of waste due to duplication. You might be experimenting with lot of things, right? You might be expert in X product. You are very expert in X product, but you are not that X product is not acceptable in a country like India then what you will be doing? You will be putting lot of R&D to find out how this X can be made acceptable by India. Then you may come up with maybe X dash. This product is acceptable in India. So, you are putting lot of efforts and in that effort of putting your experiments, you come up with lot of ways in between and that finally you ready with the product. So, this is one of the cause the company has to bear in order to customize or alter the product as per the taste and preference, but this is just for one time once the product is ready, it is going to get lot of acceptance from the market. The next cost is localization cost of the universal product. You have to localize the product which can be a universal product, a product which can be universally acceptable. So, at the cost of a product which can be universally acceptable, you are localizing it. But nowadays, localization is more important than being a globalization. Why? Because every next customer is having a full right to say no to your product, is now fully aware. Customer is getting lot of awareness and customer is having lot of options and brand choices in they just click away. So, the customer scenario is changing and their requirements, their access to the market is changing. So, you as a company also have to bring lot of required changes to cope up with the change environment. In sufficient use of home country experience, because you are experienced in production of X product and the product which you will be producing for the host market is X dash and in this you do not hold any expertise. So, what is going to happen? You have to regain or rebuild your expertise in this domain as well. So, that is a cost. Excessive regard for local tradition at the expense of global growth. This is, this is, uh, this is, this you have to accept that either you can go for global growth or you can go for the localization growth. So, you have to take a call and this is equally a win-win situation. It is not always to be stated that it is going to be a very good, it is going to be a hefty cost upon the organization. It is just about making choices that whether I should go for localization or I should go for globalization. So, if you are making a choice of becoming localized, then you have to be ready with the alteration and customization of the product and for that you need to invest heavy amount in order to find the correct product for that host market. 
these are some of the costs and beside these costs there are certain benefits like intense exploitation of local market is possible because of polycentric approach you can make use of the raw material you can make use of the human resource over there you can make use of the capital of that country right so you can exploit the local market at the fullest better sale due to informed local management here in case of polycentric approach you are ad adopting host country national staffing what kind of staffing you are adopting you are adopting host country national style staff, staffing style that means you are having better feedbacks you are having better feedback and because of the better feedback your your management is going to be more effective because you are hiring the local people local people are fully aware about the taste preferences the custom duties and everything the government rules regulation right uh, different marketing strategy which can be used they're fully aware and can update you with those requirements so your your management is going to be more effective more initiative for local products for sure you can find out what different kind of products you can offer to the local market you can also support the host government by generating massive employment right by developing the infrastructure of the country right so you are supporting the host government look good local manager with high morale because the manager whom you have appointed as a big out of this host country national style of staffing will feel pride being a part of a mnc and once the person start feeling pride being a part of your organization that means he or she has developed the commitment toward your organization and it will not be it will not be difficult for that person to generate revenue for your organization will for sure prove as an asset to your organization so this kind of morale building this kind of uh, trust building is utmost important and uh, when it comes to polycentric this become prime to be taken care of now let's look at the regiocentric approach regiocentric approach as i told you it's revolving around a particular region they do customize product but on the basis of by and large major region they take into consideration and when they are taking a particular region into consideration they are producing federalism which become a concern of different government most of the time second cause is staff career advancement is limited to the regional headquarter and not with the parent company headquarter that means you are just skilled in producing certain product which is acceptable in a particular region it's not going to be acceptable in the headquarters so there is no scope of cross sectional growth or there is no scope of you getting a promotion and moving to the headquarter and holding the position so staff career advancement is only limited to the regional headquarter that means you will confine to that if you are working in for the asia region you will work in the asia region you will never be able to move to the europe and that is that is what the, most of the people find themselves that we are making ourselves handicap there are certain benefits beside the cost attached to it it allow interaction with different region with different religion right of the people in that same area the geographical area provide some sensitivity to local condition right you are giving respect to by and large the local condition not fully like in case we have in uh, fully uh, we have seen in case of the polycentrism it is not so here in the regiocentrism help form to move purely from pure uh, from pure ethnocentric and polycentric approach it is a situation somewhere in between ethnocentric and polycentric approach now let's talk about the cost and benefits attached to the geocentric approach cost to the geocentric is high communication and traveling cost because here you are trying to produce a product which is going to be globally acceptable and for making a product globally acceptable you have to move around the world to find what world requires what world wants educational cost at all the level is also going to be very high because you will be recruiting the people on the basis of third country national style of staffing hiring the people across the globe training them educating them aligning them with their taste and preferences or aligning them with their vision and mission of the organization is going to cost you time spent in consent in bringing the consent and decision making is also going to cost you because 
as you will be having employees from different parts of the world they are doing brainstorming trying to find out the product which is going to be universally acceptable is going to be a tedious one and it is going to take time to reach to a final consensus where all the members of your organization feel like accepting yeah this product should be produced for the world market international headquarter bureaucracy for sure will be there is going to be dominated and it's going to create a tep red tapism or favoritism in the system too wide distribution of power which sometime leads to the cost because if there is too wide distribution of power that means a lot of uh, autonomy being given to a lot of people then there will be a delay in the process and delaying in the process is going to cost you personal problem especially those of international executive reentry are going to be ha should be handled with care but most of the time they get unhandled and because of unhandled issues they, there will be attrition rates and those attrition rates are going to cost you next is the benefit side of the geocentric approach let's look at them uh, it's an integrated global outlook it's looking at the world market as a whole as a single market there is no segregation on the basis of geographical boundaries more powerful total company throughout it's going to once they develop a product it's going to be the very uh, very powerful company like microsoft is into the processing of a product which is acceptable across the globe right various pharmaceutical companies are very strong having predominant presence across the globe right so once you develop the only effort you have to put is to find out the product which is going to be universally acceptable you have to put hefty amount of money to figure this out right to do the research right and once it is done you are going to be the most powerful country across the globe better quality of product and services are going to be ensured because you are going to ensure the standard product which is going to cover all countries standard or the all country quality standards worldwide utilization of best resources is going to be the one of the best benefit of the geocentric because you are hiring people from different nation you are trying to find out which particular country can offer me a product which uh, offer offer the raw material to me which can offer better to the whole nation improve local country management greater commitment to global objective and there will be higher global objectives in case of geocentric approach now let's look at the stages of the globalization after understanding the international business orientation and we have understood that ethnocentric polycentric regiocentric geocentric approaches are are going to be used by different international companies when they are taking a call of entering into international market now let's try to understand the various stages of the globalization and let and try to see how these different uh, companies under the stages of globalization are making use of international business approaches like in case of domestic company here we see the strategic orientation is domestic that means i am ethno centric that means i am following my own country culture i give respect to it and i am trying to offer the product as per my country right and the moment i start expanding my market through export to international market it will become an ethnocentric international company here i am getting into exports that means whatever i am producing in the domestic market i am satisfying the demand requirements of the home country and whatever the surplus is left out i am exporting it and i am becoming from domestic company to a international company and the moment you become a international company international companies are actually following what ethnocentrism they are following ethnocentrism and as they are following ethnocentric approach what it means what it means that it means that they are passing on their own country culture to the different country they and here in case of multinational company once you started establishing your market in the international market through the exporting and you realize there is lot of demand and why to unnecessary uh, waste the money because of the transportation and other cost let's have our own plant in the host country you invest in the foreign country through fdi
and the moment you invest in country through FDI, you become multinational. Right? So, multinational companies are going to have a strategic orientation of multinational. That means, different nation is going to be respected in the same form. That means, they are following which, uh, following which uh, centrism? They are following the polycentrism. When it comes to a global company, they are working for the global market as a whole. They are producing a product which is going to be universally acceptable. So, they are putting hefty amount in what R&D and they are becoming what geocentrism. They are following geocentric approach. So, from domestic company, the domestic company which can find their business within the geographical boundaries and once they realize their product could be exported to some foreign countries, there is certain demand of their product in foreign countries like the Banarsi Sari is demanded in the foreign market like the rice, wheat, agriculture products from our country, the spices of India are very famous in the foreign market. So, whatever the surplus is left out, let me export to the foreign market and the moment I am taking a call and moving from domestic company to the various international uh, to the various international market through exporting i am becoming international company and the moment i am becoming international company that means what i am doing i am becoming ethnocentric right what i am becoming i am becoming ethnocentric i am following my ethic, uh, ethics i am following my ethnicity now, let us look at the stages of the development. Here in case of the domestic company, there is going to be initial foreign involvement. That means, you are, uh, you, you might be getting certain imported machinery from outside for getting the work done in your own country. That is what the initial foreign involvement is. In case of international company, you are trying to gain the competitive position by what? By exporting your product in the foreign market and you are trying to generate your presence in the foreign market and by seeing the customer response, you may take the decision of moving from international company to the multinational company. Here in multinational company, the companies are those who are having a deal in multiple countries, more than two countries they are having a presence through FDI, right? And global companies are universal companies present in uh, uh, present in majority of the countries in the world. Cultural sensitivity is going to be very important when it comes to a global company. Why? Because they are not, not dealing individually with any country. Where in case of the domestic company, it is absolutely unimportant because you are born and brought up in your own country. That is why you are having your own, your own domestic company. Right? So, as you are born and brought up in your own country, you know the culture, you know the tradition more than anybody else. So, it is not so important for you to take the training of the culture of your own country. So, that is why it is mentioned unimportant here. When it comes to international company, it is very important because here you are exporting the product which you are producing in your home country may be absolutely against the culture or rituals of the host country. So, you have to see what kind of culture is prevailing in the host country where you are going to export your product. That is why it is mentioned it is very important because you are not making alteration in the product, right? You are sitting in your own country and you are trying to assess which different foreign market could be the right market for exporting my product. So, you have to assess and analyze the different markets uh, on the basis of their political environment, economical environment, all three you have to assess out like political, economical, social culture, technological, ecological, legal and even the ethics, ethical ground you have to analyze well in advance. Not only in this case, in this case and in this case as well. Multinational company, it is going to be just important. Why just important? Because you are having a FDI in that country and when you are having an FDI in the country where you are going to offer the product, for sure you will be hiring, hiring the people from the local market. So, as you are going to hire the people from the local market, what is going to happen? You will get the feedback. You will get the fair updates about this environment analysis then it is just remain an important concern, but it is not that very important because you are having sufficient manpower to update you, to guide you which particular thing is good for this nation and which is not. Next, as far as the manager assumptions are concerned, 
domestic company find there is only one way best way of doing the things where in case of multi international companies there are many good ways of doing the things and in multinational corporation they focus on least cost way of doing the thing and as far as the global companies are concerned there are many good ways of doing the same thing and that is why they able to come up with the product which is going to be universally acceptable now let's talk about the multinational corporations multinational corporations are having presence in multiple countries take an example of bharti airtel sbi bank tata right they are having presence in different different nations across the globe now what are the factors contributing in the growth of such mnc's like expansion of market territory is there right you are expanding your market from your home country to the host country and this is going to be an this is going to add to your profit margins so as the expansion of market territory is taking place it is adding up to your customer clientage is increasing your goodwill is increasing your access to the raw material is increasing your access to the credit is also increasing right so this market territory expansion is helping you to gain certain acceptance in terms of Uh, the the quality of product which you might be offering to the various foreign countries you might get start getting the acceptance and because of those acceptance what is going to happen you will be gaining certain profits out of them so that expansion of market territory is going to contribute to the benefits of the mnc or the growth of the mnc next is market superiorities right you are from developed nation you are very good in you are from the developed nation you are very good in technology your product is highly updated then what is going to happen what you will be doing you will be called by various government you please come to our nation and do the business with us like currently in india we are having a make in india concept and under the make in india concept we are asking various investors to invest in india because they have a lot of market understanding they are having good market assessment and their goodwill in the entire market is so supreme that every next government is happy with this kind of the company in their own country like uh, and the financial capabilities are also there they have a huge reservoir of the fund right they have huge uh, sources of raising the fund they have advanced technology with them and their product is highly innovated so government of different nations like developing nations and under developed nations call such kind of company in their country so that the country infrastructure will also groom and develop with them now let's talk about certain advantage and disadvantage of mnc to the host country for example india we'll try to see the relation of mncs with india here because of mncs in india what is happening there is going to be some positive point and there is going to be some negative points for sure right so there are some positive things which are happening in uh, in india because of the mncs like economic activities start increasing here the industrial activities start strengthening right people started finding that whatever the the whatever the mechanism or system of doing the work they used to find ideal is no more ideal there are many best way of doing the work as in the previous slide we have seen that domestic company used to consider themselves that there is only one best way of doing the thing but in reality it is not the so there can be various different ways of doing the things you just take an example of the japan what japan used to do japan is investing how much money japan is investing 30% of the entire revenue in what product innovation right whatever the money they have uh, budget out for the technology investment or technology in advancement so out of that budget 30% they invest in product innovation and the major percent go in process innovation major percent goes in process innovation that means they are trying to find out what can be the various different best way of doing the work let us find out the least step required process of producing the product so that the cost of the production can go down and i can gain competitive advantage in the market japanese the kind of a country having no natural resources but despite of that they are the richest in the world 
and we Indians are having plenty of natural resources, but we do not have good uh, industrialization, we do not have good system, we do not have good technology, we do not have good approach because of that what is happening Japan is buying the raw material from us at lower cost, manufacturing it and processing it in their own country and selling it back the finished product to us. So, what I mean to say that there is an increase in industrial activity, industrial start finding that can what can be the better way of doing the work, how we can upgrade our technology, how we can minimize the error, how we can come up with better effective production. This is increasing the employment and income level for sure because when you are started questioning yourself that whatever you used to do is not correct, there are various other different ways of doing the work, then there will be a call for more people to be a part of organization for R&D maybe, for more uh, business research maybe the survey and other work activity you need to undergo to find out what exactly you are, what exactly the things that you are missing with, what are the gaps in the market and when once you are ready you will start the work you need the people in the organization and which is going to increase the employment and ultimately people will start in, in improving upon their demographics. Domestic industry get latest technology because MNCs are moving to India, they are coming up with their own technology, the technological transfer is taking place, right? And so most of the time it is considered that technology transfer is going to be costlier. That is true also and for uh, to suffice this problem, what companies started doing, they started instead of transferring the technology, they start transferring the knowledge, right? And they are taking the royalty. He, uh, by, uh, by transferring the knowledge to them or by giving certain rights of using the process of producing the technology and Indian people are uh, getting those patents and those rights of producing the technology produced in India with these in comparatively less cost. Domestic input uh, supplier get more business right because now there are not only the domestic company even the MNCs are also demanding the material from them so their business start increasing. Reduction of import and favorable impact can be seen on balance of payment because earlier we used to import the Apple phone now it is going to be manufactured here, BMW we used to import now it is going to be manufactured here, Samsung phone we used to take but now it is Samsung is already into the India and having a complete manufacturing setup over here so we need not to buy from outside otherwise we have to import the product as the companies are already in India and under the make in India concept lot many foreign investors are, are being called here in India. So, as a result what is going to happen? We need not to import the things and balance of payment will also become favorable. Domestic consumer will get benefited why because they will be getting more options, the quality of the product will start increasing because it is going MNCs are going to create a tough competition for the domestic people. So, domestic people will also improve upon their quality and they come up with better product. Beside these advantage there are certain negative side and the disadvantage of MNC in India like technology developed may be may not be compatible to the host country. So, you need to transfer the knowledge rather than the technology exactly may not operate within the national autonomy. They may try to regulate the political or legal environment of the country because they might be from the developed nation, the nation uh, uh, they, and those people are trying to create the pressure over the political legal environment over here. This can create a problem for the nation autonomy. Monopolistic practices of MNC may kill the domestic industry right there may be the possibility as mnc is a very big giant they have multiple markets they are having good so sources from where they can raise fund so it's going to create a, a very tough time for the small domestic or infant industry in a host country which will struggle hard because they are struggling hard for basic basic raw material buying they might be struggling for promotions and other stuff they might not be having sufficient money they might not be having good creditors to support them because mnc are there in the market and nobody want uh, any uh, company, uh, nobody want to invest their money in a company who is standing against the MNC. So, they are going to gain the monopoly in the market. They may adopt ethnocentric approach also, right. They may start initially they might try to pose you oppose you with the polycentric approach, eventually they may become ethnocentric, they may start imposing their own culture upon the culture of the your country. Last sum of money may flow from the country in the form of dividend or the royalty, right? If as they are transferring the technology, 
then they are getting the money from the government or if they are transferring the knowledge to the country or they are taking some management contract then the lot of money in the form of the royalty will be going going from your country to their own country like disney got the uh, management contract from france for developing the theme park for uh, for theme park in japan so they were paying lot of royalty to the disney company so pollute the environment of the host country is the next important point uh, that's undoubtedly true that as number of people are coming here in india they will be making use of the resources and uh, as the resources are limited right there will be the scarcity of the resources and as the people are earning in dollar investing in rupees they might misuse the resource as well and they will and there will be the possibility that they people might be making use of certain raw material which is going to be a uh, very hazard of may, making use of certain material or the process of the production which is going to be very hazardous for the nature or the environment or the soil right so ethical ground play essential role here in case of polluting the environment that this is very important to take care of when you are asking or allowing any mnc get it ensure that they are not going to pollute the environment they are going to be ethical towards the nation resources there are certain organizational structures of the mnc like product organ product organization structure geographical organization structure there is a decentralized business division there are strategic business unit there are matrix organization unit let's quickly look at the product organization structure here the organization structure is going to be like there is a managing director there is going to be the headquarters right headquarter office is there the headquarter office is covering the most of the departments or the functions here and there is going to be the product divisions right this is the product division right product divisions like product division for product a product b product c product d this is the headquarter office right uh, there may be the head office supporting the different units the, so this is your product division product division for different and products like you might be producing pro a b c d different kind of the product so there is going to be the different product uh, structure and uh, one of the uh, strategic business units are those kind of the strategic units where you suppose you are you are having a big pharmaceutical unit and within the same pharmaceutical unit there may be the possibility that you are Uh, producing certain medicines which is for uh, taking care of uh, the covid-19 kind of the diseases and there are certain sector which who will be producing the cardiovascular disease curing the cardiovascular disease so there is a need of a strategic business unit separately for all different kind of the uh, uh, product unit that you are producing so there has to have separate strategic business unit strategic business unit are going to have separate strategy for the separate department right for producing the medicines related to the cardiovascular the different strategy different r and d is required medicines for producing the neurological issues nephrological issues different strategy and different research labs are required so there is going to be the separate strategic business unit matrix organization structure is that organization structure which is based on the projects right so it and it is not a permanent structure it is a temporary structure as soon as the project get over then that particular structure can be dissolved relationship with the headquarters and the subsidiary right here mncs are found to have healthy uh, mnc have to have healthy relationship with the subsidiary unit they need to share the information they should share resources because if they will not be sharing the information and the kind of resources they are having there will be a glitch in the decision flow and the coordination of activity will not be able to take place effectively there will be a problem in uh, controlling the operation and the strategy formulation will also get affected there will be no proper execution of the strategy so for having a healthy relationship different headquarter and subsidiary are required to have a smooth flow of relationship with each other and for maintaining that there should be a proper communication and information flow let us quickly review the different topics that we had discussed today today we talked about the international business approaches in that we talked about eprg model then we looked at the stages of globalization and then finally we talked about the mncs and the impact of mncs on india i hope you all have understood today's lecture thank you very much